Hey all, Nicholas DiMario of SterlingKisses.com here, and I've got some new resin to try out today. It's called EasyCast HD by Resinworks 3D. This resin is formulated with the jewelry industry in mind, and is designed for a clean burnout when casting precious metals. It's also made for use with DLP printers, so we're going to see how this works with my first gen Asiga printer. All of the prints in this video were done at 25 microns with an exposure of 4.3 seconds. Before we can really see how they came out, the prints are rinsed in two baths of 91% isopropyl alcohol to make sure any uncured resin is removed. They are then rinsed and submerged in glycerin and placed under a UV light to cure. This takes about an hour using a simple nail curing chamber. A glass bowl is used along with a motorized solar display to help cure every side of the piece. Your glass bowl doesn't have to be as fancy as mine, but I feel it helps. Fully cured prints will be much harder than uncured prints. Now that the pieces are cured, we can see how well the resin performed at printing. The first thing I notice is just how well the details hold up. Some of these supports measure only about 0.3 millimeters. Heavy grow lines were mostly absent, or imperceivable, depending on the piece. If I have any complaint about the prints, it would be that the material itself is a dark brown color, making it hard to see some details. Once the prints are trimmed of their supports, they are attached to a sprue tree. During some test castings, I found that basic designs cast fine, but pieces with engravings could cause issue with lettering or sharp recesses breaking away the investment. Adding boric acid to the investment mixture helped to solve this problem. I add 1% of boric acid based on investment weight. Some casters use 1-2% to boric acid based on water weight, but this is what works for me. The boric acid is added to distilled water. Some casters dissolve the boric acid into warm water, but I simply give it a swirl and add the investment powder. Using very sophisticated mixing equipment, I begin to mix in the plastic cast investment powder with a ratio of 38 to 100. The mixture is vacuum degassed and poured into a flask. They are vacuumed a second time and left to dry for three hours. Three hours later, the flasks are placed into a preheated kiln programmed with ResinWorks' suggested burnout schedule. As usual, these pieces are being cast in sterling silver. The flasks are then quenched and the investment is removed, a task that is much more difficult because of how hard it's become with the addition of boric acid, but the results are worth the effort. Here's our sprue tree, free of investment, and before being tumbled. I'll let the results speak for themselves, but I'm especially happy with how this ring came out. The castings are cut free from the sprue tree and sent through a magnetic tumbler, ready for cleanup. A jeweler saw is used to cut free any additional sprues. Small emery wheels are then used to clean up any raised areas left from removing supports. Here, sterling silver veils are soldered onto the sword and bee pendants.
gemstones are then prepared to be set. Finally, the pieces are polished, cleaned, and plated. Resinwork 3D's EasyCast material proved to be a great choice for the needs of my shop with its sharp builds and clean burnout. And with the addition of boric acid, even trickier pieces cast beautifully. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Nicholas DiMario of SterlingKisses.com. Thanks for watching.